In this video, we're going to talk about checking the linearity assumption for logistic regression. In a separate video, we talked about how we can check linearity conceptually. In this video, we're going to examine doing it in R on the low birth weight data set. I've already imported this data into R and attached it. We're going to check the linearity of LWT, the weight of last menstruation, with the outcome variable of low birth weight. So we've already talked earlier how we can make a plot to check if LWT is linearly related to the log odds of low birth weight. So let's get to producing that plot. To do so, I'm going to take the LWT variable and I'm going to break it into four separate groups based on the quartiles of the variable. So to find the quartiles of LWT, we can use the following command, asking for the minimum, first quartile, median, third quartile, and maximum for LWT. We can see those there. And it's also worth noting that we can use the summary command to get those same quartiles. So the first group of LWT is going to be those with weights between 80 and 110 pounds. The second group, 110 to 121. The third group, 121 to 140. And the fourth group, 140 to 250. So for each of those groups, we're going to calculate what's the probability of low birth weight given you're in each of those groups. Or in other words, what proportion of individuals in each of those groups were low birth weight. So first, just a reminder of how we can do this. Here, I'm going to ask R, for the low variable, give me only those whose weight is less than 110. So in other words, I'm finding those in the first quartile. And give me a table of those. We can see here, within the first group, 21 were low birth weight, 21 were not, or 50%. Now recall, earlier we learned that we can calculate this probability by taking the mean for this variable. So again, we're going to ask, give us the low birth weights only for those whose weight is less than 110, and give us the mean of those, and store it in something called P1. Now if we look at P1, we can see it's 50%. So let's calculate the probability for each of those four groups. The second group, we're gonna look at what proportion were low birth weight for those whose weights were above 110, but below 121. Let's do the same for group three, and for group four, those whose weights are above 140. Now I'm going to stick them all in one object I'm going to call probs. And we can look at that here. So we can see in the first group, 50% were low birth weight. And these were the lowest quarter of mother's weight at menstruation. Now one thing you can notice right away is that once we get into the three upper groups, P2, P3, and P4, they're all hovering around 25%. So we're going to make a plot of these on the log odds scale. So to do that, the first thing I'm going to do is calculate the logits or the log odds. So I'm going to take the probabilities divided by 1 minus the probabilities to get the odds, and then I'm going to take the log of that. Then the next thing I'm going to do is for each of those four groups, I'm going to use as a midpoint the median weight within each of them. So first I just want to show you here, I'm going to calculate those quartiles again that define the four groups and store them in something called Q for quartile. So we can see those are the four quartiles there. Next, what I'd like to do is calculate the median weight within each of those four groups. So you can see here what I'm doing is first I'm asking to give me the weights only those whose values are less than Q2, and that's this here, right? Q, the second element. So go in there, find all of the weights that are less than 110, right? That's defining the first group. Then give me LWT, give me those weights, and calculate the median of them. Okay, so what that's going to do is take all the individuals who are sitting here in the first group and calculate the median of their weights. Okay, it's going to give me roughly the midpoint in there. Now the second command here is doing the same thing. It's saying, give me the weights of those whose value is bigger than Q number 2, but less than Q number 3. So all the weights between 110 and 121, and then calculate the median of those. Same here, find all of the weights of the individuals between 121 and 140, and give me the median. And finally, all of those in here give me the median. So I'll calculate that here, and we can see those are the medians within group 1, 2, 3, and 4. Now in order to check linearity, we can make a plot of these logits, or the log odds, versus the midpoints, or the medians, of each of these groups. So I'm going to make that plot here, and recall that this should look roughly linear if the relationship between LWT and the log odds of low birth weight is linear. So I'll make that plot here. Now what do you notice? Does this look linear? Not really. It doesn't look like a line would fit through those very well. So what should we do with LWT here? We have all the same solutions we've learned earlier in the course available to us for addressing nonlinearity. 
One option, rather than using LWT, the weight, we might try and categorize weight. And what categories might we choose? I would actually say if we look at it here, we can see the weights of less than 110 seem to have a certain log odds or a high chance of having a low birth weight. After 110, the log odds are roughly the same. So I would think looking at this, a good solution would be to dichotomize. Look at, is the weight less than 110, yes or no? The other options that we've learned are we can try transforming X, transforming LWT. Is there any transformation that's gonna make this look linear? I don't really think so, but that's an option that you could explore. We also learned fitting polynomials, right? We could try and fit a polynomial through this rather than a line. So say using LWT and LWT squared in the model. And again, that's not really gonna work for us, right? We can imagine there's not really a polynomial that's gonna fit through these very well. And that's because the relationship is not linear and it looks more like there's some high risk threshold. That above 110, the risk is all roughly the same. Once we get below 110, the risk seems to shoot up. So what we'll look at doing is making an indicator variable and that's gonna look at, is the weight less than 110? It's gonna take on a value one if it is, zero if it's not. So it's gonna be an indicator of low weight. And it's worth pointing out here that we might really wanna inspect this a bit further, right? Is 110 the right cut point for that? Below 110, should we have just one cut point or maybe two? You know, do we wanna have healthy weight, low weight, extremely low weight? Do we wanna divide this into two subgroups? So we can think about trying to fine tune that, but what we're gonna do for now is just say we can see that around 110 is there's this risk threshold and we're gonna create a dichotomous variable. Are you less than 110, yes or no? And I just wanna point out this variable already exists in the data set. There's a variable LWT. It is an indicator if it's less than 110 or not. So I've already created that before making the data available, but I'm gonna show you here how we can make a variable like this. So I'm gonna show you step-by-step step how we can build this indicator. The first thing we can do is think of asking a true or false type question. So is the weight less than 110, yes or no? Asking that with an R here, LWT less than 110, R is gonna return values true or false if the weight is less than 110 or not. And here the one to five, I'm asking R, give me only the first five. Again, so we don't flood our screen with all these values, just we can see the first five. Now looking at this, we can see the first person is not less than 110, the second is not, the third is, the fourth is, and the fifth is. Now the next thing I can do is use that same command, but as numeric is gonna have R convert these, false being a zero, one being a true. So let's look at that. Okay, now and the final thing that we're gonna to wanna to do is tell R that these zeros and ones are factors. So we're gonna use that same command, but I'm gonna add an as factor here. Again, telling R that the zeros and ones are categories, not numeric values. So we're gonna do that, and I'm gonna save it as LWD capital IND, or LWD indicator. So let's create that variable, and let's just check to make sure that it looks right, that it did what we thought. So I'm gonna ask R, give me the weights of the first 10 people. We can see those weights there. And let's look at the value of the indicator for the first 10 people. So then we can see 182 is not less than 110. 155 is not less than 110. 105 is less than 110. 108 is less than 110, and so on. So it's always good doing this checking to make sure that the code is doing what you think it's doing and doing some sanity checks along the way. So that was a little bit about how we can check linearity and some of the options available to address it when it's not met. And just a quick reminder, we can do these other things like work with log of the variable or the variable squared or all these other solutions we had for addressing nonlinearities. All the ones we saw for linear regression apply to logistic regression as well.